The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has declared Governor Rotimi Akiridulu of the All Progressives Congress winner of Saturday's governorship election in the state. He posed 292,830 votes over his closest rival, Eitayo Jegede, of the PDP, who got 195,791 votes, and the deputy governor, Agbola Ajayi, of the Zenith Labour Party, who came a distant third with 69,127 votes. The chief returning officer and vice chancellor of the University of Ibadan, Professor Idowu Olayinka made the announcement on Sunday at the INEC headquarters in Akure. Kayo De La Dende Plus TV Africa senior editor joins us now to take a look at how the elections has been. Uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's good to be here again. First of all, what's the implication of this result? Yeah, it's, 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 um, it's a sign that um, the governor has done well as far as the Undo state uh, residents are concerned. It's a sign that uh, they want him to complete some projects he may have started. It's a sign to say that um, second term, it's almost becoming a backtrack in our politics. And this is also very instructive. He's going to be the second governor in the state to win a second term, and uh, it is expected that he will complete it if he's not involved in any kind of uh, uh, any any kind of impeachable offence. So, uh, uh, the first that has done it was um, uh, Olusegun Mimiko, and now he has been there because he, on those state has been uh, through some funny tra trajectory. The likes of Ajasi. It was removed during the time the military came. And you know what happened to Agagutu? It was removed in power. So it's been a series of controversy. But this time around, let's hope that uh, it will consolidate on the gains of what he has done in the first time. And so kudos to uh, Arakuni mm. Uluarutimi. All right, you just uh, said now that it seems to be uh, that uh, second term for governors is a birthright. Is that an old, another way of saying that it's, it can be quite a challenge to unseat a, a governor? Yeah, it's quite a challenge, and we must say it the way it is. Uh, you know, when we talk about the power of incumbency here, it comes with a whole lot of interpretations. One of it is that, um, uh, which we must emphasize in this election, the idea of vote buying the idea of deeper pockets, the idea of um, uh, how people are uh, settled, let me use the street language here, during election, because you might not be able to outspend a sitting governor or a sitting president or a sitting local government chairman when it comes to electioneering. And apart from vote buying, we talk about posters, we talk about the retinue of security, quite a lot of things are involved. It's a conversation that we must stay on. It's a conversation that we must bring in from time to time. The cost of electioneering is quite humongous. It shouldn't be. Some of these many, most times, are not accounted for. Trust me, if you ask any of the incumbent, they will tell you that the money is not from the state funds. But you and I will actually feel ridiculed to say that uh, the money is not from the state fund. I haven't said that the money, he put his hand in the cookie jar, but I'm just saying that um, it's not really an easy thing mm. to unseat the incumbent. It has happened before, especially when the performance is uh, very, very abysmal. You, the incumbent may not be able to do anything to help the matter. We've had it in some cases, but it hardly happens here. Hmm. Just earlier, you were giving Nigerians, you know, updates on how the election results, collation, and, and all of that details was going on at uh, the INEC headquarters in Akure. And one of the analysts you interviewed talked about uh, his opinion on how slim the margin of election results would be. But now we see how wide that is. I mean, uh, Akure Dulu has won by over 292 votes and all of that. Did you see this coming? That's, that's the dynamics of election results. And uh, to be fair to the analysts, they were judging based on what was released at that time. Hmm. Because when you have such a huge vote coming from Akure South, where the, the, the challenger was coming from, it almost closed the gap. We had less than 20 to 30,000 margin. But when other results came from the six other local government, we saw the margin getting wider. So as of the time he had that result, he doesn't have the... the, the it's not the octopus to know what exactly was going to happen. But 
it, it just tells us that Akiri Dulu has reenacted what happened four years ago for him to win 15 out of 18 local government. That's massive. That speaks volume. It also underscores something very, very important in Ondo State, the, the issue of rotational powers. For the Ondo North, that's the, our people, we must have a bite. Uh, um, um, Mr. Jegede cannot come after we've had Mimiku from the same senatorial district. So as far as the Ondo people are concerned, it wasn't long ago we had Mimiku. So irrespective in court of merit, irrespective of how flowery, how wonderful, how cool your, your manifestos are, as long as rotational issue is on the front burner, you're not likely to win. Hmm. Now, uh, Mr. Jagere and Mr. Ajayi, I yet to make statements uh, about the election results. We'll would see very soon enough if they're going to congratulate him or take it up with the election petition tribunal. Very true. Thank you very much for your thoughts on the show. It's my pleasure.